It is 6.35 and our in-depth coverage of campaign 2016 continues this morning. Joining us live in studio after a few hours of sleep, <laughs> WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Who needs it when elections are this right? exciting? You, you just got to keep cranking through it. That's so right. We did see a handful of upsets last mm -hmm. night, um, including a Democrat who, you know, our House Majority Leader, you know, he narrowly lo lost last night, John D. Simone. Yeah, John D. Simone, not everybody may recognize his name, but you certainly know his boss, House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello. Mm. Uh, John D. Simone's his number two, the, the right-hand man to House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello. Been that way since Mattiello took over as Speaker back in 2014. D. Simone's people have been seemed very confident in recent weeks. Uh, he did debate his opponent, Marcia Ranglin Vassal, on Newsmakers with Tim White and I just in the last two weeks, but they had said, no, we're going to be fine. We have this in the bag. He did not. In the end, a squeaker, 51 to 49, John D. Simone goes down. And that, of course, not only matters in terms of his district, but that's going to set off a scramble for power at the State House about who's going to be the new House Majority Leader. You know, former Speaker Billy Murphy used to say it should really be called the House of Ambition. So I'm mm. sure there's a lot of phone calls being exchanged today. You know, a lot, yeah, a lot of people also have recently been hammering away at the House Speaker uh, Mattiello over these ethics issues mm -hmm. with some of our top leaders, including D. Simone and uh, State Representative John Carnavali as well. Do you think those issues, you know, came into play last night? You know, I, I think it has to be part of it, right? You've had this relentless drumbeat of negative headlines in recent months, all the ethics filings issues, Ray Gallison uh, resigning in, in scandal a few months ago, John Carnavali and the Target 12 investigation we did there. You know, I've heard from lawmakers walking their districts who tell me privately they're hearing more about John Carnavali than the truck tolls. Now, wow. maybe they're just saying that because it was our story, but I do think that those kind of things really get to voters and they say, who are these people you're allowing up there? And Mattiello has to keep an eye on that because he of course has a competitive race it looks like in his district in Cranston this fall and I know he's already been working very hard to try to make sure he'll be okay. Yeah do you think it's going to be an issue for him in November? Well I think you know it's very hard to tell I always want to say I'm always trying to be a little modest about predicting exactly what's going yeah. on you and I were talking Danielle before we went on the air you're talking a few hundred votes some of these races many decided by a few dozen votes in these primaries November will be much bigger and so mm. without polls or anything it's hard to say but certainly there's no reason for speaking Matty Yellow to, to, to rest easy, and I don't think he is. All right, well, speaking of polls, new this morning at 6.30, we have uh, the result of a poll released overnight yeah. showing a hypothetical matchup between Kurt Schilling and Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts. What do the polls show? Well, uh, not so hot for Kurt Schilling. You know, you'd almost think it was a Rhode Island poll after what <laughs> happened here, but he's down. Elizabeth Warren's at 54%, Kurt Schilling at 29%. So a big gap he'd have to make up there. Look, not a shock, even aside from Kurt Schilling's various controversies, 38 Studios, his his own politics. It's just very hard for Republicans to win major federal and state races uh, in Massachusetts. Mm. Charlie Baker accepted, and that's the same uh, down here in Rhode Island. And so I think this shows what an uphill battle he'd have. On the other hand, you know, Kurt Schilling maybe could run a kind of Donald Trumpish campaign. He would get a lot of free media attention for the things he would say and stuff. Maybe he wouldn't need a ton of money. Uh, but then again, Donald Trump's also losing in Massachusetts in this, so uh, it might be pretty hard for him. And important to note that Schilling is not actually in it yet, just considering it. Nope, and uh, you know, he also, I think, is developing a radio show. This is a good way to keep his name yeah. in the headlines, so uh, we'll have to see if he pulls the trigger. But again, people said Donald Trump would never run. He's now the Republican nominee. All right, very interesting times ahead. Thank you so much, Ted, for joining us. And if you'd like to see this interview in its entirety, we'll be posting it at WPRI.com, including all the results from yesterday's key races.